Hampton Council on Aging meeting for November 14, 2019. I first would like to tell you about the ground rules for the public meeting. We're going to give each person that signed up three minutes to speak. Excuse me. It's not. It was. It was on the table. I asked people to sign up if they want to speak. Can you hand it around, please? Some people didn't. That's, get it. that's but we don't have, we're going to give about a half an hour for it, because otherwise it will be the entire meeting. So, there are more bills. Pass it around. Thank you. Someone block around through here. You now volunteer at Penn again? Yes, Sure, thank you. You're welcome. So, I'd like to continue to explain that we're going to allow this, everyone to speak. We invite you to speak. But we're in, it's not an interactive meeting, according to the published um, ground rules for public meetings. We have to put things on the agenda, and the agenda has already been posted. So a lot of things that might be, some things might come up that are already on the agenda. Otherwise, um, you know, we'll we'll take it under advice, and we will put it onto the next meeting, or we'll put out some publication. So. And I'd also like the council to remember that. Do not respond or ask questions to the people that are speaking. Allow everybody to have their say. And like I say, Casey will be um, timing three minutes is how much each person gets. And uh, as soon as I get the, it back, we can start. Um, I, I asked if I could say one thing before the public here. Um, my name is, is Jean um, and I just thought it might be, I, I thought it might be productive to remind people that the people who are sitting around the table, um, we are a municipal board and we are not a non-profit board. I, um, I know that, that that was a piece of misinformation that I saw recently and it's an easy mistake to make but a municipal board, and this board in particular, is charged as um, as an advisory body, and we, as such, we don't have power. We don't have governance power over the senior center. We we serve to advise, and um, and so uh, I just thought that for everybody that if you had that, if you could have that in your mind um, when you spoke, that that, that would be useful. I need the list back as soon as possible. We got a public comments or first. Thank you very much. Okay, so the first person on the list. Uh, who are you? You know you. Okay, come on. I can't read. It says to print, but I can't quite read. Nancy Dusso. Okay. My name is Nancy Dusso, and I'm here with many of my friends and my neighbors because we have a vested interest in our senior center. Many of the people in this room have been, uh, helped build this building. And because of that, we have been associated with all the directors from the first until now. And there's been bumps in the road that they've had, but they've always figured things out because their one goal was to make this place a happy place. We don't feel right now that this place is our happy place. And we feel that the reason is uh, the communication or the non-communication between the director and the seniors. And we'd like to help fix that if we can. I know there's a lot of other people that want to speak, but I'm so glad that, um, what was your name, House? House? Uh, gave us that information because two of the things that we wanted to ask today um, is what does the board of directors do and the other thing that we'd like to know is uh, what the council does so and then the third question we had was uh, where do we take our concerns who do we take them to we don't take them to the board we don't take them to the council where do those questions go thank you Okay. 
Oh, yes, hold your applause, please. Um, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Molly. It's just a meeting. <laughs> yeah. up, guys? My name is Marlene Morocco. I'm a former member of the COA. I'm also the former president of the Downtown Northampton Association. I'm also a member of the Governor's Elders, um, the Governor's Elder Services. So I'm on the state board for council. I can tell you that the director of the senior center reports to the mayor only. The council is just an advisory board. The council has no power over the director or over anything that happens in the senior center. It's strictly an advisory board. So if you want this meeting to happen that has anything to do with the director and how the director works with the seniors, that's the mayor, and it's only the mayor. Second is, I've heard policies are changing. Uh, the director's putting new policies in place for this and policies in place for that. There's a process to go through to make policies in any town department, which the senior center is a town department. It's not a nonprofit, it's not separate, it's a department under the city. So we're all taxpayers. We all have a right to know the policies and the procedures of the senior center. I personally, right now, I would like to formally ask for a copy of all the policies that are in existence for the senior center. And everybody should have a copy of that. I personally want a copy. So as soon as that copy is available, I'm going to get the hold of the mayor's office and have the mayor send it to me. Thank you. Popularity contest. It's just a public forum. Technology. Lane Williams. Um, at this time, I'm going to pass on my speech. Um, the mayor's not here to listen, and you people have no control of anything. And Marie will just make changes that she sees fit, whether it's convenient for the seniors. My comment was, we no longer make copies here for seniors or anybody who should need one. If you need it. Go down to Paradise counties, you know, get in your car, seniors, and drive down or walk down. I volunteer here occasionally, and I did the uh, gift at the coffee shop, and I noticed that they stuffed their candy, their nap snacks, their sodas, and, and I was told, quote, they're going by the Northampton's new philosophy of healthy eating. Well, at our age, sometimes we, you know, need, you need a chocolate bar to get through, you need a piece of candy or soda, but I was told if they want that, they can go down to the corner variety. They seem to be sending us off to get the services that we should have provided here. Yeah. 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 Um, I first started coming to the Senior Center five years ago, and it was a very, very warm and inviting atmosphere. The main area was always filled with small groups um, chatting, people reading, doing crossword puzzles, jigsaw puzzles, and of course Mary's items for sale. It was a lively hub of seniors connecting with one another, a sense of belonging to a community of, of and in, in itself. This is no longer the case. You may on occasion see a few people chatting in the main area, but most of the time it is barren. Employees have quit or have been fired, and volunteers are leaving in droves. Our center is being run like a business, cold and calculating. It is, the is it the intention of the city to make our center so unbearable that we will seek refuge elsewhere? Many of us have discussed this and we are aware that the city would like to make our center a community center. I, for one, will fight for the camaraderie. <laughs> can't say the word. Camaraderie. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> our center once had. Lorraine Zaleski. Lorraine Zaleski. Okay, uh, I want you to know that I'm not an angry person and I'm not here to insult anyone. I have written things down because sometimes I get tongue-tied speaking in public. <laughs> I've been coming to the Senior Center Low Impact class for almost 10 years. It's been wonderful. We are really bonded to each other and even get together outside of the center. All of us have enjoyed all of our instructors, past and present. But the story here is monetary. When we started, it was $2 a class. It went up to $3, and now it's $36 a month. Wow. This is a hardship for some. 
This is adding another monthly bill on their payments. Sometimes we could not attend a class for one reason or another. And the other way is $5 a class each time you come. Can they not find some money from some other where else to pay for it? We are only senior citizens and not members of the Y. Rita Bo 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 I have written a letter, thank you letter, and I don't know if you all saw it in the paper, yes. that um, that at the bistro one day, my husband and I were given an accolade for being two of the most valuable volunteers in the center. And we got a stand-up group of ovation. And uh, because of this, a person who works at the bistro also, who initiated this, um, was also taken out of the bistro to volunteer. They were putting her somewhere else because she had no right to do this. Also, uh, we have made very good friends with the bistro people who come to, to eat here. And they also very much like to see us back again. And I'm hoping that maybe something can be done about the volunteers are, who are leaving but ask yourself why they're leaving, okay? Thank you. Stanley Marin. Oh, uh, please hold your applause for me. I know it'll be hard. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to say is that people are talking about communication, and I've read about it, and I've listened to them respectfully, and I do respect them because they want to be active. But nobody ever told me what the problem was. Well, today I'm hearing some, and I heard some about uh, relations between the working staff and the management, which I don't know anything about. But uh, I do want to say that I, I always carry this card in my pocket. It says, ask me, retire me. American State, American Federation of State, County, Municipal Employees. And when we had a problem, we uh, you know, went to a, a person that would handle the grievance. They would represent us. Sometimes we went as far as Rudolph Giuliani. You know how that <laughs> But anyway, I, I come here and I enjoy uh, everything that I do. The art that I can't do, the pool that I can't shoot, aging that I'm not feel that I feel I'm not aging. But I would like to see more of a multi, uh, interracial or more uh, cultural kind of things that involve more people, like maybe, uh, of course, in salsa dancing or I don't know something like that. But uh, generally, my overall message is that. Uh, I'm quite satisfied with, with uh, what, what's being provided. And the art course doesn't, it's free. You can get pool lessons for nothing. That's free. So, thank you. You help with course, that's good. <laughs> Peter Jones. I hear every day and I'm here almost every day. I hear every day about things that people like and about things that people don't like. And what I'm hearing is that the people like what's going on. What people don't like is the fact that they don't seem to have any voice in decision making. Now the seniors on uh, the Council on Aging is I know oh, very well, and as I keep reminding people myself, is not the Board of Directors of the Senior Center. The Board of Directors is the Mayor. 
he is the board of directors of the senior center. But the Council on Aging has a duty to advise the mayor on what they what people are telling them they like and don't like about activities for seniors in Northampton not limited to the senior center. The Council on Aging is supposed to be representing the seniors as the eyes and ears of the mayor on the senior population. But we don't know, most of us don't know who you all are. Most of us have never met most of you. And when I go on the city's website, I see no way of contacting members of the Senior Center uh, Council on Aging. So I have written to the mayor, and I don't expect a response because I've never gotten one before. <laughs> yes, surprise to me that I proposed that a public email address be assigned to every member of the Council on Aging when in office, as is the case with other boards and committees of the city. And I hope that he will, uh, will grant that request and that it will improve communication between the seniors and the members of the Council. Carol, we're having trouble reading your handwriting. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Carol Minier. 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 Okay, Carol. Hi. Sorry. I've been attending the senior center for the last 12 years. I started when the gym was in here, and we go to the gym at the end of the hall. We've enjoyed spending time in the coffee shop after the gym, and the noise and the fun that we'd see in the big room is no longer there. Partly because Mary's little shop is gone. It, was, it disappeared before Mary disappeared, which is so terrible. I was told it was coming back. I think I was lied to. The books, yes. there used to be the books there. That's what, right. what does seniors love? They love to browse, they love to have a bargain, and they like to visit with each other. And none of that is here in East Ring. Uh, the, the gym itself, we no longer have our access person to go to who we would tell a piece of equipment wasn't working right or there was something, uh, people not following the courtesy rules of 20 minutes on a machine or not changing shoes because they were rooting the equipment because the shoes are, I mean, the shoes carry dirt and the dirt gets in the treadmills and things. But uh, there's no one to talk to because no one's been available. No one comes out to you and say, hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm now the person. There's none of that. And there used to be. There used to be a very open environment. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Carol. Grant Howell. Um, I moved here about three and a half years ago. And when I moved here, one of the first things I was told was about the senior center in Northampton. And with what other people have said, when I walked in, there was a lot of fun, laughter, welcoming, I mean, people. And it didn't matter race, color, creed, sexuality. It was just people were people. And then I noticed, and it was, it was bright and it was light. Now, when I come here, I quit coming as often as I used to because it's depressing in many, many ways. You walk in and uh, people are really not happy anymore. And, you know, we're seniors. And the two words that come to my mind that we're losing here, uh, respect and civility. And I'm just wondering what it's going to take to get this back. I don't have all the answers, wouldn't even pretend to know. But it's amazing how many people are here today feeling the same way. And if you've noticed the articles in the paper, there's been a major theme there about how it's changed and how we, we feel unwelcomed in our own community. And, I, and here we, we, pay the we pay your salary. So what's up with this? So that's what I want to say. Very good. Thank you. Diane Kieber. 
or any graver. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm here four days a week. I come to an exercise class three times a week that I've been doing since it opened. I was using the senior center before it moved here. And I play bridge here twice a week. And my main concern is some that have been expressed, but others as well. No written communication. There have been so many changes in our exercise class, and not once did we see was a, a written notice put in the exercise room, nor were the volunteers at the front given written instructions. So the director told us, if we're sick, you can get credit for that. Don't worry about it if you're sick. But I know someone who's going to speak later was sick and had trouble. And then I went to the doctor, came in and said, I've been sick. I'm coming in a few weeks late. Uh, no, a few days late. It's only I only missed two or three days. But I should pay now the rest of the month, right? Oh, we don't know about that. We don't know how to, I, do you have anything about the sick policy? No. So this is, and it's a burden on the volunteers. They're lovely people. It's such a shame to confront them. And, and they did give me credit. They allowed me to tell them what I thought I owed, which was very nice. But, you know, it shouldn't be that way. Secondly, the sliding scale. Someone mentioned affordability. The senior director, the, the director said there's a $15 bonus grant. Very good, well and good, but that's only for one class. It doesn't allow a person of low income to take a second class here without paying full fare, or to go on a trip, or anything else. It's for one class. That's liberty. We have Y instructors, fine. What about using the Y sliding scale? They have a 10 to 60% sliding scale. Why can't we have the same thing at the senior center? It would not, you could implement Y instructors and a Y contract, why not include their sliding scale? Uh, secondly, a third punch card option. Many of us expressed on the survey that we'd like to see a punch card. And I think that would work wonders for making things easier. If we're sick or you just can't get out of bed or whatever, you have a, a visitor and you can't make it that day, you're not paying for it. Otherwise, without the punch card, we're paying for classes we cannot attend, either because we're sick or we just have other things, a doctor's appointment, anything. We have to pay. And that's not fair. That's, the burden should not be on seniors to be paying for classes they miss. If, there, if you need to pay the instructors, this city has money. There are other ways if you have to supplement things. Find a way to supplement it. They've had grants in the past. Someone mentioned we started out paying $2 a class. We also at one time had almost a year, over a year, of free classes because the Senior Center had a grant that allowed us to exercise for free. So I just think there's a lot of creative ways to find it. Time. Okay. I did send this letter to the mayor, and he acknowledged that he would look at it, as well as to all the Council on Aging members, so you have it in okay. your hands. William, or is it William Jobs? Jobs. Or William? William Jobs. Okay, I was William. going Sorry, to, uh, I was going to ask what was brought up originally, and I appreciate it, the, uh, the, the position of the Council on Aging as, as opposed to a board of directors. And I now understand that it's only the mayor that is responsible. Why isn't the mayor here? Uh, a lot of people do this. Thing. There's obviously a lot of uh, a lot of interest, a lot of suggestions. Did anybody contact the mayor and suggest him come to the meeting? I understood they did. What the mayor is too busy to uh, Nancy, did attend the, the meeting? Mayor get okay, no cross you talking, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I asked that in the beginning, no cross Well, did you contact the mayor and suggest he come? There's obviously a lot of uh, interest in this meeting. I can't answer your question at this time. Oh, my. Uh, mm -hmm. well, you did or you did or you didn't. I, well, I, I would make a suggestion that so, at future sorry. meetings yes you ask no. the mayor to attend. It's his choice whether to come or not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you through, sir? Yeah, I'm through. Anico Giordano? Yeah, right here. Um, hi. Um, so I was going to make some extemporaneous remarks, but because of the three minute time limit, uh, arbitrary, I feel, um, I'm going to read what I was going to say. So um, I started um, trying to deal with some of these issues that everybody has mentioned. 
by looking at the February 2019 issue of the Chronicle, where Jerry Ann Butler and Dennis Helmus, who were the chair and vice chair at the time, um, talked about what the purpose of this committee is. And they very articulately mentioned that they really listen to the needs, this is a quote, and concerns and questions of elders. They are advisory board, as everybody else said. So anyway, we are here with our needs and concerns and comments. Uh, and as I am sure that um, you are aware, a lot of seniors, as well as not a few volunteers and staff, are unhappy, as you've heard them express it, with the way things have been running for the past year, essentially since the new director took office. So the reasons seem to vary from very specific complaints, money, whatever, um, but mostly it's been the sharp decline of the atmosphere of the senior center. And we really come here, I mean I do anyway, primarily for that and to be allowed to really do things. So my own point of view on this uh, is that the overriding causes is perhaps the NCOA uh, as an advisory board can convey to the mayor and the city council the two entities that make decisions and I assume that passes through the director. I started with the bylaws of the council. And the bylaws, uh, which were originally written in 1960 but have recently been revised, uh, under the bylaws, Article 2 describes the purpose of the board. That seniors, um, the main point in um, Article 2 is that seniors, one, have the right to participate in determining man matters that affect them. And number two is have the wisdom, experience, skill, and abilities to share their abilities with the input. So these are the two things that have not happened. Okay, so first of all, uh, as an example, uh, in my own case, if Article 2 were followed by um, the administration, then 50 plus participants in the bi-weekly bridge game would not have been summarily dis dismissed and the game closed down uh, without any discussion or forewarning. I consider that outrageous and I'm still waiting for an apology from the director. And in other words, the seniors with their quote experience and wisdom and lives are directly affected should be consulted before a bunch of changes, decisions, new policies, etc. are made. Uh, I just want to mention that many people wanted to be here and had to be turned away because we didn't have the ability to move us into a larger room and those people unfortunately can't participate and wanted to be here. Um, in the last year I've just observed a focus by Marie and staff um, on punitive governance, rules and regulations, and a punishing atmosphere. Many yes. yes. staff yes. have left, wonderful people have left, yes. uh, people that enjoy sharing their wisdom, skills, experience, abilities, who are volunteers, are not here anymore because there is punitive governance at the senior center. Um, it is the job of the advisory committee to advocate, advocate, people please go online and watch these meetings. An, an unreasonable amount of time has been spent on should we wear our badges? We shouldn't wear our badges, they might ask us questions. They'll be able to identify us in the hallways as board members. Um, go online and, re and watch these meetings. There was one meeting recently where a few uh, members spoke up, and rightly so and wonderfully, it was like, okay, something's going to happen here. Um, and it became some kind of a conflict, which they wasn't intended at all and was taken as an insult, it looked like, by Marie. Um, Rita wrote a letter in the Gazette today, please 
please read that, people. Please write to the mayor. I, I call for people to ask for a meeting with the mayor today. <coughs> Put your name down on a piece of paper and give it to me, Arita. Let's go talk okay. to the mayor. The staff okay. people that have left are fabulous. And now we're left with people that enjoy punitive governance. Um, the transportation, I've heard, is going to be cut back. I don't know if that's correct. I don't know if that's true. Again, can we just say the AARP has defined, the AARP aging group has defined transportation, housing, and one other thing as the top three needs of seniors in Northampton. Why, if, if it's true, why is transportation going to be cut back? People need to get to the doctor. They need to get to the appointments. They need to get here. I know you can't answer that and clarify that in the meeting. Um, I guess that's that's all I have to say. Thank you. Susan M. I can't read the last name. Susan. Okay, Mark. 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 I've been coming in to exercise classes here since January of 2009. I've been doing it for 10 years. And suddenly, my class, my teacher was let go. Everybody's favorite teacher. Yes. And we got a gazette on the Saturday before Labor Day. But of course, we couldn't speak to anybody here until Tuesday. But when we came in Tuesday, nobody knew what was going on. We didn't know if we were going to have a class yet. And we changed the class, and it's okay, but um, the, the thing that upsets me the most is that the senior center was, when I started coming, a place where you came that wanted to help the seniors of Northampton, wanted to serve their needs. They don't know what our needs are anymore. In fact, well, um, they don't want it anymore. It's just a business now. It's a totally different place. We don't feel welcomed. It doesn't feel as if you're here to serve our needs. You don't know what our needs are. You don't bother to ask. And it's it's just, for me, it's changed my life tremendously. This, this was a very important part of my life. I'm still coming, but it feels totally different. There used to be the books outside for sale for 25 cents a book. There used to be yarn that people donated. What happened to that? It's not there anymore. And then they yeah, who needs yarn? And I always bring some turtle from here. It's not there anymore. I've asked about it three or four times. It's just not there anymore. It's curious. Um, it just feels so different here. And I think everybody has said that. But I used to sometimes come in and just sit on those comfortable chairs and the main room and read and it felt so good it was a nice place to be it, it doesn't feel that way at all anymore there are people just enjoying the place nobody enjoys it anymore and all these people have either been fired or have quit because they can't stand living in this atmosphere
that's what's been missing all along. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's that's it for the public session. Thank you, everybody, and we will pay attention to what you said and take it under advisement. Right. <laughs> Now we'll continue with our regular meeting. <laughs> okay. So, um, we can accept. Although it's hard to hear what's going on, if you don't mind, so they clear out. For the people that are Okay, for people that want to leave, if, if you're welcome to do that, you're welcome to stay, but we'll need it to be quiet once we resume our meeting.
All right, we're going to go right into um, the new business. Right, or should we talk about this? We're not ready for that. The, the old business where we have the public notice, we're not ready to, this time for that um, listing um, to be approved by us or to be reviewed. We haven't got the, um, the, the revised, so we'll hold that until the next meeting. And so, um, so down to new business, Marie or Jay, discuss policy about aging, ages for participation in the programs here. For non-seniors. Non yeah. So um, I um, I sent I sent you all a sort of a draft of a couple of policies. Um, I've been researching other senior centers and their policies and procedures on guests. Um, almost every single senior center has some policy about when guests. Um, can come and for what purposes. And so some of them say gen uh, intergenerational things that are um, advertised as an inter intergenerational event, of course, are open to all ages. Um, that caregivers, of course, are can sign in as a guest. And that um, when we're open to the public, that other age groups can come. Um, there has been, in a lot of our literature, um, it written that people between 55 and 59 can come for certain programs, but we have yet to designate any specific programs as being in that category. Um, the only difference is here is that people who are in that category pay maybe a dollar or two dollars more than people who are over 60. Um, and so I think that we need to sort of decide what our policy is and um, also to make that known to the public. But the way we've been making that known to the public is that in the Chronicle we will say specifically this event is well um, open to the public or this event is open to families or um, this event is an intergenerational event um, so that people know because I think in the, you know there's been some confusion. And then to have a sign-in sheet at the front desk so that people, when they come in and they're a guest, that they get a guest pass like they do in most municipal buildings, um, which is also a safety precaution because of, you know, when there's an emergency in the building, it's important to know who may still be in the building. Um, um, and then that way there's no confusion also. I think the volunteers have a hard time um, that, you know, they're not comfortable necessarily um, vetting that process and saying, you know, why are you here? What are you here for? So it will just help make that run smoother. Um, and, but I do think we need to decide um, how, how we designate certain programs. So I, I think having guests come into um, programs, non-senior guests come into programs that are actually senior programs would be one way to de differentiate. So if we had, like we've had an intergenerational program on a weekend, it was understood, right, that it was an intergenerational activity. Um, but if we're going to designate some programs as 55 to 59, um, and some that are only open to people over 60, then we, we should do that, because that's what it's, we should either get rid of that policy or we should make it clear which programs people can go to in different age groups. Let's see. Wanna, is it okay? Oh, go ahead, no, you go first. Um, um, it's just, uh, what I was concerned about was just, I, I, just a way that someone could have, like, a, just a drop in, not necessarily a program, but just to, to come, and, to come and, and, and come in as a guest, at, you know, as a one-off, you know, like, for yeah. instance, I mean, not that it's all about me, but my artist <laughs> here, and, um, right. and, and I had my instructor at Hill Institute said, because she wondered if she could see it, she said, I can just drop in and, and look, can I? And I felt like, I hope so. Um, but that's, but that's I, why we need a process. Right. So, and, um, I did notice that there's, you know, there's, when you come to the screen to sign in, there is the option of saying, I have no... No, I'm not a member. I'm a guest, and it seems to me that at that point, whether the direction is just 
on the screen that says please go to the desk and sign the book and but uh, assigning in makes good sense in all the schools I've ever worked in they always for fire purposes had to know who was in the building just in case there was a fire yeah. but we also just had a sticker that said visitor and um, and that that seems like such a simple way of dealing with not necessarily the programmatic Piece, and I don't know how, how big of, of an issue that is, but for the rest of it, for the just like coming and sitting on the couch for a few minutes with your grandmother or going to see the art or, you know, whatever, that seems like a very simple way to, to move forward. I, 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 I'd echo what you say because I know of people wanting to do something and have like their grandchildren kind of come in. In fact, I just heard from somebody, somebody who's a regular member is going to have a surprise birthday party and they want his his granddaughter to come in and surprise him here because this place is quite important to him. And I didn't dare say to him, well, I'm sorry she can't come in. So but having right. a guest policy like that would be, be able to... Yeah, but I think that the that it's a, an adult visitor policy unless right. there is a program going on that kids are coming to oh, so because, because otherwise then we have what's been happening is that people are bringing their grandchildren and parking them on a couch while they do something with their peers. And I think if we start to do that, if we start to allow people to bring their grandchildren at any time, then pe then people are going to say this is turning into a community center. I mean, that's what people are saying. It's like, it's not, it, our funding is di dictates that this center be primarily for the use to serve seniors. And so, but that doesn't mean that we can't have specific times when uh, other kinds of activities can happen. I think that we can set parameters. Um, it doesn't, you know, I mean, I think we can set parameters in that, um, you you know, if a child, that, that, you know, you can't regularly bring a child with you um, you know, it, 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 while you're doing child care or something, you the child can't be unattended, that a visitor can only stay for like an hour or, you know, I mean, there's a, a whole bunch of ways that you could, you could, you could make parameters around the visitation policy mm -hmm. without making it so that it's not, people don't feel as if they're welcome to bring and share their experience here. Yeah, I want it to be clear so yeah. that there's not right. confusion and people don't feel like there's a, a necessary barrier and that's why I've been looking at um, other center policies because I think um, each center is has these policies because our funders require it mm -hmm. um, and that's where that 55 to 59 year old bracket came from because when we get funding from the executive office of builder affairs um, it doesn't say you can give, you can use this money to serve people from 55 to 59. It says you have to use this money to serve people over 60. Um, and so that's where that differentiation comes in. So, but if, so if we have a grant program, we will say we have a grant program that is specifically funded for over 60. We will do that, but we we also do have other general funding, and so, um, but there is some allowance to have. You know, we start we allow people under fifty, under sixty to come here um, for programming. If there's people going to all kinds of programming over fifty five to fifty nine, so. Um, so it sounds like we're all in agreement that we need some kind of policy and some kind of guidance and. I'm not sure what the next step is, whether you need input from us about specifics or assistance in the draft. Um, it also sounds like the guest policy and I would say what the illustration of the grandchild coming mm -hmm. in, like a special event policy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that's either one off and, mm -hmm. and just a question of mm -hmm. can I you know, call up Jay or call, call up someone and say, you know, grandson's coming with me today, we'll be here and and just to, to clear it so that it's okay, but in terms of special occasions, but not so that we, it turns into a situation where if I'm taking my grandkids today that I, it's sort of like I, I'm 
you have to make some choices. Either I'm coming here for an activity or I'm taking care of my grandchildren. It's hard to Yeah, I mean, some, unless it's an yeah. intergenerational program. Right. I mean, some people don't want to be around children, and some people really do. You know, so I think we need to respect all the different desires of the seniors. It's so, like it's a kind of communication issue, it sounds like again. Yeah, and then if you don't want to be around children, you just don't go to an event where you know children will be. And then you, you know, so I think it needs to be clear. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I can share all the examples I've been collecting um, from other other places that have these things spelled out. Yeah. I feel like this yeah. might be one of those moments where, um, I mean, if we're maybe a subcommittee of some sort, yeah. would be yeah. a working group. And I think that, like, especially given the way that um, today has already gone, that it would be really great to have, like, a couple of people who are regular pe people who seem to feel that they would like to have, like, input. Um, in communication, I'd be really happy to be, I mean, I'm not here, but um, if we wanted to have like five people or something who could all, like, from different... So it's either a subcommittee of the council or it's a working group that includes patrons group. and... Yeah, a working group members. that would also ask for input from... Yeah, I mean, I, the difference is that if it's a subcommittee of the, of the board, uh -huh. then we have to abide by open meeting laws and we have to post the meeting and we have to yeah i mean yeah. um so so it just feels like working group sounds better yep yeah right so it, it, we just can't have a quorum mm -hmm. of the council right right to mm -hmm. be involved in that right I, I, don't feel, I, I, I'm sure. I mean so i i don't have to be on but um, if other people feel like they really really want to be on it <laughs> <laughs> Working group sounds good. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll send out an email to people who just wanted to um, So I did send a um, sort of the draft of the complaint process that I've been putting together, and um, I just wondered if there was feedback on that. Um, you know, I think there's been a lot of confusion about how to make complaints, how to communicate. Um, uh, you know, if people don't come to me, I don't know that they're upset. And so the complaints should come to me and they should be written um, and submitted. And a lot of complaints that go in the suggestion box are anonymous. I can't really, I can't really reply to someone if they don't sign their name. So I, I'm trying to clarify, complaints shouldn't go in the suggestion box, they should be formally submitted. As soon as something is formally submitted, it becomes a public record. Some people may not feel comfortable doing that, um, but um, suggestions, you know, how we handle suggestions, like people ask sometimes, do you look at our suggestions? Of course, I look at them. Um, you know, some of them are complaints. Some of them are actually really great suggestions, and we talk about them as a staff, um, and sometimes we can implement suggestions and sometimes we can't. Um, I'm also um, putting together some sort of Q&A um, for every topic that's coming up in the suggestion box or in complaints um, where I'm sort of explaining the decision making that happened around that change um, so that people have more of the sort of the meat of why those changes were made. Um, and sometimes that might satisfy and people might feel like, oh, that makes sense. And sometimes people may still feel like that, that's not what they would like. But um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of good reasons to some of the things that we've done. And I think that we just need to have a place where people can go and look at the explanations for those things. So I'm starting to draft those. Um, two things. I think the idea of disregarding a complaint that is put in the wrong box is punitive. I think if it's a complaint and you know it's a complaint, it can easily be taken out of the box and addressed. Anonymous is a different thing. Yeah, no, they're not signing their names. Okay, I'm just yeah. saying if it's an honest complaint with a signed name and they put it in the wrong box, to just say, I don't want to look at it because it was put in the wrong box. No, is that's, it, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, it says that the uh, anything put in uh, 
Complaints left in the box will not be responded to and should be submitted formally. Yes, they okay. should be submitted formally. The last thing on the complaint policy says that the complaint should be submitted in writing to the director. How are they going to get to you? Are they going to hand them to you if they come to the counter? Or is it going to be given to somebody right. at the desk? Or is there going to be a box I, to put them in? They, either way, they can hand it to me. They can give it to the receptionist who will put it in my box. So I could put in there that I have a box that can receive because you may be busy, you may be out of sight, you may be some someplace else. So if there is a place where it can go, and if the people that are at the desk don't feel comfortable doing something with the complaint, if it can just be mm -hmm. dropped in a file or dropped in a box, it would right. make it. No, the receptionists don't have to do anything around a complaint. Okay. So, I should say I, I like the uh, the having a number of options and ways for people to express opinion. And I would, uh, and I would hope that if someone's making a found suggestion that they want to put their name to it. So if you wanted to follow up on it, so I would, it maybe we've got if you're suggesting a great complaint form. Maybe we have a suggestion form, and and there's a name optional. But if you want some feedback, give us your name and your contact info, right? So that you can, someone can follow up. And, you know, if I make a suggestion for paint this room blue, then you might want to follow up and say, okay, get the painting party ready. Um, but just just an opportunity for someone to at least make a suggestion that's not anonymous, so you can follow up. And I think, and I respect the fact that if someone wants to make a complaint, you've got to be able to know who they are, what the complaint is, and how to respond to them. Anonymous complaints are just impossible to, to deal with. Yeah, I mean, I of course I take it into yeah. consideration, and I, I also developing a um, program proposal form because a lot of times people come up and say. I have this hobby that I'd love to share and teach other people and um, you know often we're saying we need you should talk to the program coordinator because she can talk to you about all the logistics but that kind of drags the process out so if there's a form they can sort of give us all the information we need to to think about where that would be what time of day what rooms are available um, you know so we can start that conversation so um, Last meeting, uh, you raised. Speak up, please. Sure. As I recall, during the last meeting, you made an observation about anonymous suggestions and complaints and the problems involved in not considering them. And you spoke from some experience. And I just wondered if there's anything you'd like to offer in the context of this discussion so far about it. Well, in, in all types of communication, if it's supposed to be relevant to an organization, you at least record what the thought was. Whether And statistically, after you get you know enough thoughts on a single line or a direction, it should be relevant enough, even though it's anonymous, that if, if five people tell you an elephant's in the room, you may not have to turn around to see if there's an elephant in the room. Uh, so it's just, again, it has to do with numbers and information, if, and, and it should be relevant. If, if, if the complaint has really no relevance, then it's a different story, and it could be completely out of the box, you know, why aren't the walls green? Uh, it could just be something irrelevant as that. But if it does make sense to take that small, you know, Again, it could be a, a large letter, but you can take the important facts out and look at them as a group. So I, I will definitely be doing that in our binder, our question and answer binder. You know, the frequently asked questions, that's, I took your input yep. and that's what I'm doing with it. And people will be able to go and see if we've addressed their suggestions or their complaints. Um, and, um, I will explain why it isn't possible or why it is possible. But but if they what it, what it often is is that sometimes things are possible if we have someone who's ready to champion that and be a volunteer because we don't have the staffing capacity to make something happen sometimes. And you know, so a lot of times if people say, you know, I really want there to be karaoke here, I say, do you know anybody who could lead it? Yes. You know, because that's really the issue is a lot of times we don't have someone who has the 
expertise or the equipment or the time to make something like that happen. Absolutely. Kathy? I'm just curious in terms of when you say relevance, who determines relevancy? It, it depends on if the it is a fact for the organization or a fact against for how it operates for the people that are involved. You know, uh, it's easy enough. You know, I went through the last uh, twelve newspaper articles yeah. and took little blips out of each one and then made a comment for myself on what was relevant out of the conversations. Uh, and it, it just gives me an opportunity to say, gee, we've got five that say the same thing. I have one that, or two that really don't understand the process. But again, uh, you try to make sense out of the information you're given. Uh, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. Or, or does, if something, I just want to say, piggyback on what you're saying, if something doesn't make sense, that's certainly when it does come in handy to have a name and a phone number to call to say, we got your suggestion slash complaint, oh, we need and more. <laughs> we, we don't quite understand, we, and ask some clarifying questions around it, so at least the person would then feel like, well, we were trying to understand it, even though at first glance it didn't make sense. Somebody called? No, Okay, I don't know if a person went with it. Um, okay. no, and anyway, importantly, I did also want to point out, um, I agree with your question about who determines relevancy, but also I think to me it's a little unclear what uh, we're defining the difference between a suggestion form and a complaint form and how are people, and you, someone might say, oh, it's just common sense. However, I'm just asking us to think about it, that pe it might be potentially confusing to people to know when, you know, and sometimes, and I also think it would be great if somebody is, you know, if we are calling it a complaint, if people would like to say, and this is, give some ideas as to how they think uh, something could be resolved. There used to be this expression, not to go to your boss with problems, go to your boss with some solutions. And that's what I'm advocating for. That that comes from the community okay, as well. I'd like, yeah. to, I'd like to support him on that. that. I think that a little bit. I, mean, I think that to have a mindset. How would you? What What would you like to see as an outcome? Um, would just structure the whole thing a little bit more than it is right now. Because that just open-ended lines sort of like tend to like not be as productive. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to the next topic, which is the assistant director's report. Oh, she's on our notes. Well, just like, it reminds me too, before I forget to do that. Is that No, no. Okay. Putting her notes. Okay, um, let's see. So we, I have been recruiting for volunteers to fill in for some of our open slots. Uh, I had one interview today, I have a couple more lined up for next week. And we do have an, a special event coming up, which is the holiday luncheon on the, what the is? Sorry. Um, where we will need 12 to 14 total volunteers to come help, um, you know, serve the food and clear, clear the tables and so on and so forth. So if anybody um, on the council... I'm sorry, I didn't know what the date was. The board. The, the day of the week is Wednesday. Wednesday. It's Wednesday. So it's an off, off schedule from a lunch, regular luncheon. Um, yeah, if you could reach out to me and let me know if you're available on that day to assist. Of course, that's predicated on the number of people who actually purchase tickets and um, desire to participate. Uh, what what time practice. does it start? Uh, yeah. I'm going to start to I'm sorry. No, it's in the Chronicle, yeah, but it, I think it's, uh, I think we're serving at 1145, okay. so we probably need people to come at 11. 11 or 11. 11. 15. Yeah. We just push that up and, yeah. I, you know, currently in the uh, little um, 
people that are available for reduction in taxes. Okay, there's a listing of how many people like to, to work for senior services, but I don't think many people even know that it exists. Uh, they're putting out a press release about it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, it's buried into different areas and it's the, uh, you have to go and find it. Yeah, they just finalized the sort of revamping of the forms and the forms will be now um, processed through the mayor's office and then people will be sent to me and to Steve Connor, depending on which they're going to be working under. VAR. Okay. Yeah. Marie, there's a there's a cap right on the number of people who are in the. There's not really a cap. Right there's now. Oh, good. There's yeah. a there's a dollar cap financially. Right. They do there is a cap someplace, so it's not there's not an endless number of folks who. There's no yeah. There's no financial um, guidelines for veterans, but there are for seniors, and there isn't really a cap on how many. Um, and the um, the. There's actually a lowering of rates, this uh, number of hours that you need to do this year because minimum wage is going up. So the more that the wage goes up, the less hours people will do and the more volunteers will need. So Got it. Follow we need more volunteers. <laughs> so, so the premise is, uh, so whatever my contribution is, time, that's, times the minimum wage is my right off from the taxes. Yeah, it's up to $1,500 off your property tax. Um, so we're, yeah. You're done. Um, I asked the chef to provide us for this meeting, and we should, pardon me, we should, <laughs> we should open it. I can smell them today. Okay. I'll open this one, you guys can open that one. I'll open this one now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, we can go on to uh, Jerry the report. Jerry? <laughs> yes. I just want to thank our group for recognizing that it needs to be called a holiday dinner. And because we are all about diversity and inclusion, uh, there, there's still so many places out there who don't uh, take that into account. So I'm proud of our city that we are doing that. Uh, we are actually mandated by the law to be non-secular. To be non-secular. Oh, nice. Tom, so this was right there. Chance to vote, volunteer for the big here on election day, the maple walnuts. Go. Those are the ones that sold out first. They were gone by the time they got Just saying. Um, so the, we can't only let like these people. I, I, I was doing it. I was asking so I could. Yeah. Just pushing the maple one to come. Thank you, Donna, for arranging for the food. Um, the report. Before you do that, I think I've asked this question before, but maybe everyone's heard it. The bake sale raised how much money approximately on election day for the uh, lunch program to offset the cost? I saw it was about a, a little over. Wow. That's great. So that's, that's what's helped keep the cost of $3. Much bigger. Great. That's, that's a lot of bakery. We got a lot of donations. I know there were some when I was here, people just contributing yeah. dollars without taking food. Yeah, right. It was great. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. Enjoy. He was consistent, but it was good. Um, okay, you want me to start? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, the transportation survey, um, we finalized a draft. I just wanted to get input on that. If anyone had anything they wanted to contribute as feedback, um, the questions I'm trying to answer from the transportation survey are um, basically if we are able to streamline the hours so that we have more riders at the same time because the bulk of the funding that we're using is to cover staffing hours and we're often driving one person around at a time and that's not really a good use of our funding, we really need to increase our ridership and we're sort of repeating the same issues that PBTA had in, 
That's the whole reason why they dumped off senior transportation onto us because they couldn't figure out how to get more riders on the van at one time. And I think um, as we get, we're getting two smaller vehicles that will provide sort of more of a comfortable and intimate transportation experience rather than the rickety van that we've been running, which we are we're putting it down. It's, it's, um, <laughs> it's on its last leg. So um, we have actually another one that's also being kept for parts. So um, I'm looking forward to having these other vehicles that I think will be a much nicer way for people to get transportation. Um, but the questions I wanted to get answered were, you know, just basically if we are to offer certain transportation for certain services at certain times, um, what would they be? What would be the best option for people? Um, uh, also, would we be able to supplement that with carpooling, a carpooling program so that people are connecting to others for social outings? Um, this was very successful in Williamsburg. Um, because people who were homebound would get picked up, would well, get called and invited to be part of an outing, and then that would create a social connection, and then those people would start to go out together all the time. And so if people got put on, you know, they signed up on a list that, yes, I want to be called when groups are going to the movies, or I want to be called when they're going, you know, to the snack bar or to the, to the music in the park or whatever that, um, a peer is calling and saying, I'm taking a group of people, would you like to come? Um, rather than some people, you know, might not want to call up and sign up to get on a van. Um, so it kind of gives more options. Um, is, there, is there a license restriction on the vans? Do I have to be a CDO driver? No. Not for your vans? No. Okay, so there's no special licensing requirement other than having a policy addition that would cover additional passengers as being a livery. You don't have anybody drive your own car? No, if you're driving for an outside service, you, you I don't know what the current are, Massachusetts Are you talking about our drivers? No, if you're, if, if you're going to have people who volunteer to use their cars for, out for separate transportation, mm -hmm. is that considered to be livery and if it does so because most senior centers have a, a volunteer driver okay. program so um there we already are doing that actually okay. with medical rides so um, yeah so your insurance company should be okay you're you're as long as you you're check with your insurance yeah. there's something wrong with the medical drive program is uh, we just we need some more drivers um, but we're not getting any emails telling us that they're drives. That's what I'm wondering what happened. I know Jen's not here, but... Well, no, Michelle's taking that on, so... Okay, well, um, there's a breakdown. I want to look into that, because I'm not getting any emails that say drives needed, which is... We used to get them, like, every week. Okay, I, I'll talk to Michelle. Um, and let's see, okay, so we talked about the complaint policy, um, the suggestion box. Um, the Board of Health rules, um, so I've been, you know, sort of trying to look at how to roll out this policy that the Board of Health um, wants any food that's being eaten here to, um, that are groups bringing in food into a public building need to have a permit um, because it's a public building. And so um, they are advising me to just have a policy that there's no outside food, but that we provide food for groups. And so Kevin has made up a catering menu and it's very reasonably priced. And then we would be able to offer refreshments for groups who wanted to have a party. Or, um, and in some ways that would also benefit our lunch program because it would help put money just back in. To, to our programming, um, but um, Meredith at the Board of Health, she really felt strongly about this because, because seniors don't have as much um, flora gut for digestion, they're really 
um, much more prone to food poisoning. And so if people are making food in their homes and they aren't served safe certified and they um, have animals or you know whatever, we can't we can't be sure that that food that they're serving and people coming in to be part of their groups isn't going to make them sick. And um, yeah, I don't know how people will feel about this. Um, I think it's part of the culture of like we all share food and it, it can be um, a really important and personal thing to a group. So um, I talked to Kevin about how like people will want cake. He's not doing cake. Can we do cake? Um, and you know originally I had talked about like that this would be also a good thing if the inmates were learning to do cake because they don't learn that in the culinary program at the jail. Um, that that would be something that maybe they could do and they would learn a skill that would make them more marketable when they go out into the workforce. So anyway, I just wanted to see what people's thoughts were about this um, because I don't want to roll out a new thing right now, but I do want to get, I just need to keep trucking along on um, how we would do that. Clarification, you're only talking about groups. So if, am I, all right, so if I brought my lunch here. Oh, any individual can, yeah. So I bring, bring your own, so we're only talking about groups who use the space. We can't, we can't all take bites of your sandwich. Right, <laughs> that's where I was first call, but I wasn't going to let you do that anymore. Oh, that's not fair. But it seems to me that, you know, you've gotten the message from the Board of Health and it would also seem to me that we might want to engage the Board of Health in helping to be, if not the sole source of communication, a co-source of communication to help roll it out. Mm -hmm. That is a, a policy, and I'm sure yeah. other city buildings have the same policy. And Smith, yeah. do you think yeah. that would be a source of um, things for the mm -hmm. issue? Maybe. I think Kevin has, he thinks he can. Oh, um, he makes you can take care of it. I know he's made cakes for us already, but... Um, so, anyway, so I'm looking into that. Um, I guess I thought it might be a nice way to... to just provide, you know, some support for um, sharing food, too. So, I mean, I, the gay men's support group does a potluck, for instance, and when I told her about that, she said, well, is it a closed group? And I said, no, because anyone can join. And she said, well, then they need a permit. Because basically they're functioning as a food vendor because they are serving food in a public building to the public. And we're advertising it. So, it, you know, but she's, you know, okay, so. Um, and it could be something that Kevin could work with that group and figure out. I'm usually group on group menu or something. Oh, they were yeah. totally fine with it. They were yeah. like, that would be fantastic. Okay. But, um, Save me from making something. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they they said sometimes they come and have lunch as a group. So, um, I have been writing up text for. Signs. I mean, you know, I don't want to do a lot of signs because people just don't read them all. But um, you know, I think um, the question and answer binder that I'm talking about will have things in it about like, you know, what happened to the candy in the coffee shop. Um, but maybe putting a sign in the coffee shop that talks about um, our partnership with the um, Department of Public Health. Uh, so I've been writing things up about this. So we, I think I've said this before, but we're a department of the city and um, we, we are just like all other um, health organizations or organizations that serve the public um, concerned about the health epidemic. And so we are trying to make food access better. We are trying to provide access to healthy food, and um, we have replaced a lot of the soda and candy and things like that in the coffee shop with a lot of really great options. Um, 
and um, just having some signage about that. Um, you know, there is, there are peppermint patties and granola bars and things. I mean, it's not like there's nothing left, but um, different things. You know, just sort of having some signage about it because if, if there are people who are asking a lot, then people who are working in the coffee shop can point to that. Um, let's see, arts and culture, that's sort of trucking along. Um, fitness, we are still working on options from feedback from the surveys, um, looking at sort of a business plan in terms of the um, fiscal possibilities around different payment options and membership options, um, looking at liability and certification requirements of the instructors, um, looking at the supply and demand relation to cost and profit margins and financial aid needs, because there really isn't. Um, we have a lot of classes <coughs> with, some of them don't have very many people in them, and so it just seems like if we had maybe a little bit less classes, we would have more people in all. <laughs> but I don't want to take things away. I just I want to make sure that this is fiscally sound, whatever we do, so that people don't have to pay a higher fee. Um, we don't have the resources that the Y has in terms of financial aid. Um, and the city is subsidizing us quite a bit already. So um, so anyway, we're working on all of that. Um, the intergenerational programming that we had scheduled recently, we had to cancel due to low enrollment, but I think maybe um, later, <coughs> it was on a Saturday, I think right before Columbus Day weekend, and it maybe just not have been the right time, maybe we just need to get the word out more, but um, I, um, I was excited about that. There was gonna be an animation workshop for older kids with their grandparents and a story time for younger kids with their grandparents. Um, and that was a partnership with the school, um, early enrichment program. I'm starting the Coffee with the Director program starting next week and I will do it every month at a different time so that people who can come at different times throughout the month can um, or throughout the week have the option of a uh, convenient time. Are you waving at me? I have a question. Uh -huh. What do you expect to happen? What are you sort of looking forward to? Well, I think people are asking for a way to communicate and I I am available to for people to talk to, but I'm, I'm also off in my office, so um, it will be a time that people can they know they can come and ask questions or give me their ideas or um, I can tell people about things that you know they want to be told about. They so just can be in a room and then people can kind it's of come be in and the bistro okay. with refreshments. Okay. I think it's a great idea and I think it shouldn't be um, deterred if it's a fire host the first meeting, you know, like um, and you know, because people people have a lot to say, but I think over time, it's, you know, it, it would be great. I don't know if there's, I mean, I'd like, a, a Monday morning is a time that I can, I can come, but um, I can't, you know, like, depending on what it is, and I wonder if there was a process by which we could, you know, like, I, I don't expect, to, like, mm -hmm. everything that happens, but if there's, if there was, be you know, like, a summary of, like, you know what I mean? Like just like if, if something yeah. big happens, like if there's a, a common theme, um, mm -hmm. a lot of suggestions. We report on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Always yeah. 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 planning on attending at least one or two. Yeah. 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 But I thought it could be like if it, it just is, if there was a common theme, if, if you reported on, if you're planning on reporting it, that's all I was asking. That's great. Um, yeah, I will. I um I. I think I'll, you know, have some sort of ground rules about, um, you know, I think it's just always good to, like I did with the Bridge Club, just to say, like, let's talk one person at a time, um, because so that people aren't talking over each other. Um, and, um, you know, I think there's a lot of confusion 
and um, no one's actually talked to me in person. So, um, of course, they don't have any answers. <laughs> so, I'm totally willing to talk to people. Um, so, the marketing plan is moving along. Um, we, I don't know if people saw the insert in the Gazette. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that was a great idea. Yeah, I was people, pleased to see it. People are excited about that. Um, and I thought maybe we need to replicate it here because they're coming in and wanting that. <laughs> and then, uh, um, but I mainly, you know, I really wanted to make sure that we were getting people who um, aren't yet 60 and are reading the paper. Um, I mean, and we, we started to do the monthly chronicle going out to everyone over 60 because we were doing it every other month. And so people just really weren't hearing consistently enough about what was going on here. And as soon as we started doing it every month, we had mon much more people coming. So I think that people really need that regular um, information. And then the, the emails that they get weekly as a reminder is really helpful. Um, the donor directory, we're getting a lot back. Um, for subscriptions and donations for the publication. We, um, I think this was a number from last week, but as of last week, we had taken in $3,245. Um, so, let's see. And then the next thing is the Agent Dementia Friendly Initiative, um, the Downtown Florence uh, Age Friendly Design Project went really well. It was, um, a little sparse, but I think it went well. And um, Cindy and I met with the Chamber of Commerce uh, yesterday to talk about the partnership of trying to educate the local businesses about how they can become age-friendly employers um, and also um, make their businesses age-friendly so that people who, who are older um, and have dementia that they're comfortable in the atmosphere that the business is providing, and that their cust that their um, staff know how to be sensitive to people's needs when they have dementia. Um, so, how, how are you doing right. that? Right, is the education. That was my question as well. Mm -hmm. um, well, we so um, Linda Desmond and Cindy and I are working with um, MCOA because we have a grant mm -hmm. to do this. Yeah. Um, going to be building a website. Yeah, there also is Dementia Friends and Dementia Friendly Community. They're, they have a lot of um, on, online webinars that people can easily go on and, and watch like a five or ten minute. Yeah, we were thinking that might be best for business owners. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we'll do multiple ways of mm -hmm. connecting with the business community, but uh, a lot of times they're too busy to come to a right. presentation. So, um, and Forbes Library has volunteered to be our guinea pig, and so they will be our first each friendly business that um, will go through the assessment. Um, Excuse me. So we can't, yeah, not during the meeting. Yeah. I was just looking for the public sign-in sheet. Sometimes I'm in a meeting, but I have it now. Public uh, sign-in sheet? The, when the, the public comment, but I can Oh, yeah. sorry. The names of the people? It's okay. Oh, I thought you were asking for a moment. No, 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 it's fine. I'm sorry. Um, so um, last week I went to a two-day retreat that I helped uh, set up for um, regional food access work uh, on the Healthy Hampshire Mobile Market uh, Project. And that's working on um, sort of uh, regionalizing this mobile market approach, which um, they're going after a big grant so that uh, basically all the people who are in um, lower income neighborhoods or um, public housing who don't have a local grocery store that they can get to easily, um, that the mobile markets are going to those neighborhoods and selling fresh vegetables at wholesale prices. Um, and we were partnered with them all summer. Uh, the kitchen here was doing the cooking club and making samples of the food that we were selling at the farmer's market here, and they were serving those samples at all of the neighborhood markets, um, which was really great because the kids, uh, 
the kids and the neighborhoods were always really excited to see what was, you know, that the, the hummus was beet red, you know, and um, and so it's just been a really positive um, project. Um, I've been on the steering committee for Healthy Hampshire for eight years, I think. So, and that also includes so it's not just older people. So it's into more. Um, it's it's about that. public health in the community. Right. So um, it's not just Right, but a, but a lot of seniors mm -hmm. are benefiting yeah. um, from all these markets too. Um, and that is one of the things where the public is coming mm -hmm. into the building to shop at the neighborhood market here. Mm -hmm. um, Cindy and I spoke at the Reimagining Aging event on October 26th, um, where the, World or the previous World Health Organization director, um, Dr. Kalakis, um, he's the one who coined the term age-friendly. Um, we were asked to speak on a panel, um, so we talked a lot about the kinds of initiatives we've been working on here with the planning department around um, making Northampton age-friendly um, and, and the steering committee work we've been doing and the work with EARN um, on age-friendly businesses um, and they did a great job I was there uh, you, I think the two of you ran off before I got to say hello to you but I think you you did a great presentation Thank you. and it was well received yeah, yeah. it was it was nice to, to be among the uh, Council on Aging peers in the field um, and and other organizations yeah as well yeah. Um, and We'll be working with the Gazette also. Um, I've been talking to them with our contract with them about um, creating a reader's choice category for businesses that are that, um, so voters can vote for their favorite age friendly businesses. And then we will be designing a certification, like a logo that could go in their window so that people know that they've met the criteria to be age and dementia friendly. Um, and then AARP's criteria. Where's that? We're using AARP's criteria. Yes. Um, and um, we will be, you know, we'll be slowly developing that and launching it on the website and at the Chamber of Commerce. And um, it's, you know, it's an exciting way to start this process because I think um, I think the businesses are starting to really pay attention that. Their, their their customers are aging. I mean, they've had customers that have been aging the whole time, right? yeah. but I, there's a lot more aging customers. Um, and just being sort of um, more universally accessible in every way, I think will serve everyone. So, um, you know, it, being a you know mom with a stroller and being in a wheelchair and or being an older person with dementia, like the, all, there's a lot of crossover in all those things, so that a business can be more tuned into. Um, so we're working on getting the annual appeal ready to go out in the census mailing. I've added um, some different categories to it so that people um, can choose whether they want their gift to go to the programs fund or to the financial aid fund. Um, some people really want to help pay for programs that people benefit from, and some people want to help people who can't, maybe can't afford programs with fees to go to those programs. So this kind of gives people multiple options. Um, let's see, um, the capital improvement request um, we've we'll been working with. Um, the architect firm, that architectural firm that's doing a space study, space use study here, um, will have some plans soon to to show us of different options of ways to uh, do some upgrades in the lobby <coughs> um, and make the space kind of flow better and um, get rid of our 12-year-old carpeting, things like that. <laughs> um, so I, when, once we have those options, then I think we'll, we'll start to ask people for input on what they like and don't like about it. Um, the pie fundraiser is going pretty well. I don't know how much, 
how many pies we've sold so far, but um, all of the proceeds from that will go to the $3 lunch program. And the bake sale did pretty good, I think. Um, yeah. I've had a few comments from people that they think the lunch should be more expensive. What do you think of that? I mean, do you yeah. think we really can do that without there being a uproar? <laughs> Well, so I, I really want to build a financial aid fund um, so that once we have enough on the financial aid fund, and I, I did go to city council to, to get the wellness grant funding set aside, um, but we don't, we don't have the kind of money that like, the Y has for, for financial aid. And so, but my, my goal is really to take away the stigma and provide the financial aid so that people could buy a class card at the fee they can afford rather than um, have to self-identify at each point. And so if we can do that, then, then people will be able to access it even easier, but we have to have the funding. No, I was saying the lunches. No, we could raise the, the fee, three. but I don't. Oh, oh. I don't want to do that. I didn't really finish my thought. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't really want to raise the fee yet until okay. I have more financial okay. aid to distribute, and then. But I have been. I do really think three dollars is the price point for seniors and people who in Williamsburg, people who could afford to pay more, just gave extra mm -hmm. money, and. And then if we do things like this where we we do some fundraising specifically for this three dollar lunch meal, you know, program, it makes it accessible. But feel free to give more money if you want to. <laughs> and that can be promoted as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's an important it, it would be I thought that I mean when as you've been talking, I thought it yeah. might be helpful. There's there's the um I know they can be one to raise money to keep the three dollars as much as but also you know people have been talking about if they could we could have three dollar um, classes or a card or whatever and that what we need is money but I wondered if it was at all possible to like ballpark how much money do we need you know um, because I think that having a, a goal it, you know and, and being and not only that but being able to talk to the public and being able to say you know this is because we we could do that if we had this much money. right and as, as we are going into a campaign to try to ask for donations from people mm -hmm. you know that it's out that's also a really good thing to to be able to say this is how much money we want right. hope to raise yeah i mean i i um i haven't really pulled those figures together just yet because i'm also looking at how much are we going to need to raise for our building upgrades if the city can't give us what we really want? And we, we say, you know, we, they say you, we'll pay for this kind of carpeting or this kind of flooring, and we say, but we really want this. This is better. Um, then, you know, we might want to prioritize. I can't yeah, really so expect I you to over, answer me now, yeah. but I just thought, like, in the future, that that would be a useful thing to know. Yes. Um, yeah, so I, I think we do need to come up with numbers and a timeline. And so when I, when I get the information from the architects, I'll have a better sense. But that um, that's just been earmarked in the you know the capital improvement request that the uh, central services put in. So. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to sort of piggyback on that. I think it would be really helpful to get sort of a, a, a report, because I know sometimes we talk about so many different um, programs and services and how much they cost and so on, and I, I've, I've heard you repeatedly talk about how committed you are to keeping costs low. You, you've repeatedly talked about how, how much that's some, a value of yours and you want to make sure that things stay really low and affordable for people and there's some equity in the programs and so um, I would love to for my own sake sort of get together with an idea of like which programs I know you have certain offer certain discounts and so on or, or we or, have a certain you know we have free programming right. we have low-cost programming exactly. and then we have higher fee programming and I really think there is a good variety yes. of options it's just that I think that some people 
want what they want and they that's why we have the wellness grant because then they can apply it to that but we can't we don't have enough money yet to subsidize all the things so and i'd like to be able to offer that i know yeah See, i'm addition. just wondering if if if, um, if we could get sort of a report on on which pro which activities fall in which categories and in particular i'm really interested to, to find out how many people we turn away because and i know that might be difficult to have a sense of but i uh, you know i know that there is in place people are able to Ask yeah. For. Yeah, and I think and we'll get that information if, if when we, we do a survey. How, how often that's being done, and how often it's being turned away because we don't have enough money, mm -hmm. as well as, as as Jean mentioned, like if you do have an idea, like gosh, I really would like this amount of money to be able to offer a particular discount or whatever, it would just be nice to have like a whole maybe that on the agenda and a whole sort of session on that because I know that's something sure. we really care a lot about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and the annual appeal may prove that everyone out there also really wants mm -hmm. that. I mean, that may be the thing. It may be that the program gifts are smaller and that the financial aid gifts are much higher mm -hmm. and then we actually have, we see that the community is also very invested right. in that. Right, exactly. Um, Thank you, Bob. Uh, one, one more question and I'll try to be quiet. From some of the people that were talking, they were talking that a lot of people have left the center. From the scan in information that comes in is there any tally done on how many people come in and how many leave is there anything that really says that we have lost significant attendance we have or not. some level of attendance no we have actually gained more people in my tenure than we had ever before and i run the stats and i presented them at the city council's city services meeting this weekend last week <laughs> Um, we have, so, let's see, um, we have 668 new members <coughs> joined since April of 2018. We usually have, um, about 350 to 380 join each year. Mm -hmm. um, there's always some attrition. Yeah, of course. And um, the, so we have 2,662 members. 2,015 of those are residents, and 641 of those are non-residents. Um, prior to my hire, we had 1,994 members. 1,515 of those were residents, and 479 of those were non-residents. So we have more people coming than ever. Um, I think that I think I think that there's just a lot. It's hard when there's change, and I represent change in a lot of ways. Um, and um, there are a lot of rules that the city has because they are government they are part of the government and um and you know i think that not everyone has had to encounter those in the past necessarily or um i mean i, I think even when we revamped the code of conduct there was confusion because people didn't know there was one previously um, and so when we revised it, they thought it, these were all new rules, but they weren't. They were the same rules, we just added vaping to them. <laughs> so, and, and that we um, want this people to talk on their cell phones in the foyer, um, but they can still use their phones. So, so there was a lot of confusion about that. So um, I think there's a lot of perception that um, that this is all very punitive, but it really is not intended to be that way at all. Um, it's it's a municipality, um, so I didn't make those rules. I will raise my hand again because I know it's getting really late, but I just want you know I've been noticing because I, I you know a lot of people are down on Facebook, but I do have a Facebook account, and I know that you've been doing a lot mm -hmm. of um, email blasts or uh, Facebook posts. I mean. Um, that are you know to, to kind of, and I try to share those because I think yeah. that it's important. It's great, like I was saying. I mean, there's like 
we, there are a, so many things that we do do well, and that computer um, that we're at the end of the week, I thought, I wonder if every like Monday or something that um, if whoever does, I don't know, somebody has to labor to send to, to do the, but if somebody could just say, well, last week. We served so many people right. at lunch. We did so many yeah, people. We did exercise class, so, you know. Thanks, and we just like because I because I think that like saying the good things that are happening would be um would I think that that would be a, a really nice addition. Plus, if we're going to the public and asking for money, it would be nice to have something other than what has been happening in the Gazette, and you know, with people who are. Um, not writing to say what a wonderful time they had, but you yeah, know, because because yeah. people never do, you know. I mean, they rarely do. Yeah, no, we're wired to remember yeah. bad things because yeah. that's yeah. how we survive. Um, I think um, I can totally put a, a report up. Um, the other thing that's frustrating about our statistics is they're not accurate because a lot of people don't sign in mm -hmm. and they don't sign into everything that they do here. And so um, when I send my annual report to the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, Emmett will sometimes call me back and say, I think you need to triple those numbers. You know, um, because, I mean, I, if, I know sometimes it looks empty, but like if you've been here this morning, <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it's just, I mean, sometimes it's so busy. It's so busy, and so I think that it's a misconception. This place is not empty. People are some people are unhappy, but people aren't leaving. And any staff or volunteers that have left have, have left for all very different reasons. And um, anyway, I think I think that I think Linda had the same problem. I know, and from other places that people don't sign in. Having been on here a long time, that people just it's hard to, to capture people. A bad idea to have a volunteer as as people come in. We do. We, we oh, cut yeah. out the notch in the desk, and we have someone sit oh. there to greet people and say, "Remember to sign in." <laughs> okay. But we can't show make them everybody sign into everything, everything they do. So we're trying to figure it out. But um, yeah, I mean, we're trying to revamp a lot of things so that things are clearer and that people get a good tour and a good orientation, and they get the social work appointments they need and um, so and I write about it in my articles but I don't know how many people out there read them you know I think some people do but you know I'm trying we're trying to get at information out there in many many different ways um, so it's longer than it's appropriate right now I'll, I'll do it again have to be out here at 5.30. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. Everybody needs to be out, so we need to start But Whatever thank you. you. <laughs> and, and I may fall into the same category as Michael. That um, just a, I just made a couple bullet, quick bullet points. So we wanted, Michael and I may need to know when is a good time to share that. Please. Um, so I, I will um, send send out an email with examples of policy from other places, other centers, and also evaluations, because we're going to do the transportation survey, and then um, later this winter, um, you know, not too far away, we're going to do a program, participant program evaluations. And so I want to hear from the patrons, like, what's working in your group, what's not working, do you you know, do people feel welcome in some groups? Do they feel like they wish they could go in and be part of a group, but they don't know how? You know, like they don't feel welcome, or they need to be invited. You know, what are what are the things we could be doing better? I, and so, um, I want to do a program evaluation, um, and that will really help us to have a lot of information about what people are liking and not liking and I um, I think there are more people coming who haven't come here before and want different things and so we're we're trying to sort of address all the needs of different groups different kinds of needs and different kinds of groups of people um, and it's great it's 
you know, where um, I met with Northampton neighbors, um, at their Latino outreach worker the other day, and we are talking about um, starting not just the conversational Spanish group, but um, an actual like like a monthly luncheon for the Latino community. So I think that the diversity that could be happening here is going to happen. It's just going to. You now we've got the LGBTQ luncheon going on, and that's really just taken off. It's really people are really happy about it. So okay, we've got quite a few. I have one little tiny one. Whatever was first. I think you don't want to. No, Mike. You said you, no, it was a little bit. It wasn't directly related to. It. Okay. Oh, this is. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. One of the things that became abundantly clear during this meeting from the public session, from comments from this members of this committee, was that we are an advisory committee. We're not a board. We don't have decision-making authority. Two things I'd say about that. One, there was a tendency to notice that in a kind of, sadly, native context, oh, you guys, we don't make decisions. And so I think people sort of got that. But we are an advisory group, and it does seem to me that we should spend some time as a council figuring out how do we give the best advice? What do we need to do? I heard suggestions, uh, suggestions from Jane just now, a terrific suggestion. But how do we organize ourselves in such a way that we can listen, we can learn, everywhere there is, and come up with a, a simple process so we can give the best advice to Marie and the staff. I've heard from some of the members who were here really good things, but what's the process to determine relevance, put it together? I don't want it to be a hyper-formal process, but I think we, as the council, we are the council, and we are advisory, what should we be thinking about in terms of a fairly simple but meaningful way to get the information and the, the feedback so we can be good advisors to the region and their staff. And I don't think we've had that conversation. I've heard it uh, from people sort of uh, randomly, but I do think we can come up with a, a simple sense, for example, there was a lot of misinformation out there. I don't think that should be ignored, by the way, because I think if we know what the misinformation is, we can correct it. And you've done a good job of doing that. So there are things that we need to be thinking about. I don't think we should overcomplicate it. But as an advisory group, what's the best way we can be informed enough and smart enough that we can give the best advice? Mm -hmm. And I'd like for us to spend some time thinking about it. Not overdoing it, but you know, I think there's some simple things we need to do. You've been a, a help and other people too. So. Well, I, I think one way to to know what the constituents want is for them to tell us, right? And and no one ever comes to this meeting to talk to us. And this is the first time, really, that we've had people come talk to us. And so this is this is why this exists. This is a forum for people to get feedback and then we do every senior center does program evaluations does surveys and that gives us more information Absolutely. Um, and the more information we have the more we can find out oh well this program is really outdated and it's not really of interest anymore I mean sometimes we're like well no one seems to be going to it so clearly it's not of interest but but there are other reasons why people don't go to things and it may be because it's not working right or sure because somebody's dominating and no one else like, can get a word in or something. I mean, it. it I think sometimes um, we don't know why, and if we don't talk to people, we... I couldn't agree more. If we talk to people, though, how do we get that information to you? Here. To the, well... You can email me. You can... Well, let us think about... Yeah, yeah think let us think about... Yeah, I think it's a good idea to think about it yeah. and bring it that like maybe have part of our meeting be, mm -hmm. being bringing information mm -hmm. from. Uh, you know, I've been a part of this board for a while, and the previous board, we, the board didn't hardly have much to say. It was mostly we were just given information. And this sure. is a much more participatory board, I believe, than the one that 
was previous. Good. So, right. you know, yeah. so and that's, and that's, that's why we have working, working groups too, because I think right. the working groups like are really where the work happens, right? I mean, we we're confined by a public forum in this way, but when we get together, we brainstorm and we do research and we hash out all the issues and then we come up with something. Sure. That's really valuable. Um, I would much rather do that in a group than on my own. I don't have all the answers. Um, and so I often look to my peers and I go and I talk to other senior center directors. Um, you know, there are whole forums for the senior center directors to do this. So, but we are a different center than the other centers. We have different cultures here. Than I agree. I, my comments are really to my fellow council members. What can we do to be more effective? Mm -hmm. And I've heard a little bit of not, not critique, nothing about you. How can we be of more help to you? What do we do? I've heard stuff from people outside. How do I bring that? Mm -hmm. The working groups will work better if they have good information. And so, and it's, it's a question that I think we should address. I don't think we have to make it tremendously formal or anything. Just what can we do as a group, as an advisory group, mm -hmm. to marshal the advice and to get it to the places where it's going to be worked on? Yeah. That's all. Okay, let's speak around. Okay. Um, Thank you. I just want to thank you. you. You've covered so much ground. I've always been impressed by that uh, and learned from you. Uh, so thank you. Um, and I just wanted to piggyback on, there's been talk about food and events and coffee shop and lunches, etc. cetera. Um, I don't know if everyone knows November is National Diabetes Month. Um, there's different health observances all year long, every month. But I think diabetes is a year-round issue for diabetics. And since we're serving food here, uh, I guess I just wanted to advocate for uh, at any time food is being served here. Um, and, and it's not the same that I know people say, oh, it's a slippery slope, then the gluten-free people will want it. No, it, the doctors will tell you if, if we're looking at healthy eating, um, we always want to make sure there's some fruit or a sugar-free option yeah, we definitely for people. Yeah, we know. And so, because sometimes when I read the menus, um, I haven't seen, um, you well, know, fruit. And so that's why I'm just wondering, I do people have an option you to get a clementine, yeah. for example? People yeah, actually ask. You I work in the you bistro, can. and they yeah. will ask for a piece of fruit, and we will substitute yeah. Yeah. something that yeah. they the have. The other thing that I mentioned to Kevin, because I, you know, being a nurse practitioner yes. now, I had some concerns with the kind of municipally prepared food that we do have here, is that, you know, to have options, in fact, one of, the, one of my uh, friend's colleagues was in who's a diabetic, so there's nothing in here I really can eat. Right. So that's why Kevin now has hard-boiled eggs and yogurt. So he has incorporated some I asked for yogurt 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So I like, put yogurt with not added sugar, but that, at any rate, as long as, like, with the pie thing, thing, for example, none of the diabetics are going to be buying those pies. Or they right. shouldn't be at least. Okay. <laughs> so, so all I'm saying is that we may want to come up with some alternatives and just keep it in mind a little more so if we can, where we can. And um, also, um, it just uh, making sure everyone understands where that Q and A binder will be kept. If it's kept at the front desk, if people can say, "Can I see the binder?" I can. I, I, I mean, I I'm looking at whether we need a different suggestion box or we should put it. But I think it will be, it'll be with the suggestion box, so that people can. I mean, they, I feel like they're connected. So. Yeah, yeah. And I also wanted to mention that how much I think the idea of having the working groups is helpful. And I, when we were talking before, it reminded me of how we do. We did establish a policy working group, who, um, and more of us could join it <laughs> when we helped revise the. Um, Code of conduct. Code of conduct and the bylaws. So all I'm saying is, why don't we, you know, when uh, there are policies to be newly written or rewritten, to kind of call from that group as well. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I guess we've hesitated to have, um, because of open meeting law, to have official committees 
and so what I for been, working group computer. So what I like what I like I've been doing is doing a lot of research, bringing it here, and having you give feedback because um, you know I get the mayor's input. I have to I have to run it through the mayor's office. He is my boss, so yeah, yeah. Um, no. But I but I will bring it to here so that you can all give me input okay. because I think we I want to make sure that the that I'm not leaving things out that should be in. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to move on to Bob and Kathy. So we mine's a little tiny one. Well, before you go, last yeah. day, I'd like the um, there was a dementia friendly um, group that, uh, group group that, that um, Kathy and I. And I believe you were on it well, as well. The age friendly, but the age mean, and dementia friendly. I think was. It's well, we just want to put it out there that we would like that we're happy to help. And it, uh, maybe there were some email issues of not having emails, but other people whose emails were, had not changed hadn't gotten announcements about how we could be helpful. And we're just here to for you to use our expertise. And that you and Cynthia don't have to do it all on your own, and that we're happy to help. You know, right? I mean, I Cindy's kind of she's the chair of the steering committee. So, well, then this comment is for her yeah. as well. Yeah, that's all. That we're here to help. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm all done, and thank you. Okay, Bob. A little question on the sign-in screen. There's nothing for volunteers to hit that on here as a volunteer. Yeah, oh, there is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. up in the yeah, left hand corner. You, you, go to, you, go, you go to a different screen. Everybody, as soon as you sign in, you go to the left hand, hand side. Oh. Yeah. So we just I've never heard that. That gives you choices. You didn't get properly trained. I'm sorry, obviously. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 people know I'm here usually, so it's not. Mr. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so, no. so I know. Michael last time asked about how to make the center a more welcoming place and I know I just heard you talk about the evaluation because I know you're really interested in getting lots of feedback and so on. I'm just wondering, we're also talking a lot about working groups and senior voices. I'm wondering if in addition to your evaluation, which I assume is going to be written and just, you know, get as much feedback as you can, could there also be a senior working group, senior member? Yeah, I want working, to have focus groups. Yeah, focus group yeah. to to get their ideas about how we can be a more welcoming senior uh, center. It's wonderful that we're getting newcomers. We want to keep the people that we have here, and maybe we could get some advice from the senior members on how to do that with a focus group. Of course. So, yeah. We, uh, we in addition, to, as as part of your evaluation yeah. process. Yeah. For that specific mm -hmm. thing about how to stay and be more welcoming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And and we have a decorating committee who is really working on that, making it feel more welcoming too. Because people like the decorations. They they want us to reflect the whatever we're celebrating that month. Uh -huh. And we're working on that. And the holiday so decorations too. To go to Casey and Donna. Do you guys have anything? Everybody else has been talking, but I want to give you guys the floor. Anything? The only thing I have to say is, um, with everything that happened today, with everything I've been reading in the paper, and honestly, the way you were greeted here, your first day, our first committee meeting, I was appalled. Um, and I, I'm actually at this point going to write the mayor a letter because I don't think he's handled this well at all. I don't think that he has supported you at all um, in front of this committee council, and. Uh, I, I think he's trying to respect my role as the authority here and not step on my toes. I mean, he is supporting me. But he's never come out and said anything to me. When you first came here and four people got up and left and put in their resignation and caused that whole thing, I thought that was horrifying. A way to greet a new director. Mm -hmm. And let, he never put any support. And I think he should have been here today if he knew what this was. But several of us volunteered as a result of that action, and he was really laudatory about the reason, and thanked me and others for supporting and you know coming in. So mm -hmm. he did. That was real support. You had a meeting. Huh? I didn't understand. I never heard anything from him. No, no, no. he voiced anything from him. Oh, oh, new people stepped up, right, because they wanted to help. Oh yes, yeah. and I think it's great that we got this. Which we I think that's great. But. Donna, how about you? No, I'm, I'm full. Okay, just say that um, I, I really appreciate
appreciate being part of this group, and I would like to help you in any way that I, I can contribute. Thank you. And I, I want to thank everybody on this concert because that was tough. That was tough for all of us to take it. It was very tough to hear all the negativity that there was very little positivity, which unfortunately. But I want to thank you all for being a part of it with us all of us here. Okay. And thank you for how you handled it. Well, we, we, clearly, we clearly have some work to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to wait for a. We need to make a final joint Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Fantastic.